Hi everybody, my name is Raven Baxter and you're watching Add Jeans Intro to the Lab Bench. This is a safety protocol for biosafety levels one and two, also known as BSL-1 and BSL-2. There are four biosafety levels and the purpose of the four levels is to distinguish between different types of hazards and attention to protective measures for each level, as each level has different safety requirements. BSL-1 is designated for those who are working with microbes that don't cause disease in healthy humans, and BSL-2 is for labs that work with pathogens, including organisms such as Staphylococcus aureus or Vibrio cholerae, for example. BSL-2 includes all the precautions needed in BSL-1, along with some additional precautions to prevent injuries, ingestion, and exposure to hazardous materials. Let's start by discussing BSL-1 guidelines. Right after you enter the lab, you must make sure that you put on your personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, and wear it the whole time while you're working in the lab. You'll need a lab coat, closed-toed shoes, gloves, eye protection such as safety glasses or goggles or face shields. We'll talk about some of the other things that you may need throughout the video. Do not eat, drink, chew gum, or even apply makeup in the laboratory. Before you get started with your experiment, make sure that your workspace is free of clutter. Wipe down your workspace with a disinfectant like 70% ethanol or a 10% bleach solution. And that you have all of the materials that you need to get started. You should also know about some of the other items that are present or should be present in your lab for your safety. For example, you may accidentally come into contact with hazardous materials. In these labs, there is a sink, an eye wash station, a safety shower, a fire blanket, and extinguisher present in the room and should be used in case there are emergencies. Make sure you know where all of these items are before you get started. You should use the eye wash station if you get something in your eye. Make sure that you wash your hands before and after working in the laboratory. And also be sure that you know where the designated chemical waste accumulation sites are in your lab. There's nothing like starting an experiment and producing waste and then having it like, oh, okay, what do I do with this? You need to make sure that you know where to put these things before you get started. If you haven't received hazardous waste safety training, you absolutely should ask for it. Make sure that you receive that training and then also consult with the MSDS material safety data sheets prior to working in the lab or using chemicals that you are not familiar with. In the lab, you're working with things like glass beakers, flasks, needles. These objects, when they break or when they're used, can be considered sharps and should be placed into a sharps container. Sharps containers are thick walled and they must be impenetrable by a needle and they should be able to close securely. There may be times where you're working with biohazardous materials and it's super important that you label materials as biohazardous. Any waste that is biohazardous or any items that have come into contact with biohazardous waste should be disposed of in biohazardous containers. And these biohazardous materials are usually decontaminated prior to disposal, most likely done in an autoclave. Only mechanical pipetting should be done in the laboratory. Please do not use your mouth to pipette in the laboratory.
Make sure that you clean any spills immediately and then decontaminate as necessary. For large spills that can't be cleaned easily, make sure that you evacuate and close off the area. and alert the chemical hygiene officer. All right, and now we're ready to talk about biosafety level two guidelines for working in the lab. BSL-2 laboratory guidelines are expected to be followed in addition to BSL-1 guidelines that were previously discussed in the video. BSL-2 labs must be clearly marked as BSL-2 and the names and contact information of the laboratory manager should be clearly visible in the lab. BSL-2 centrifugation steps require the use of an aerosol tight lid and the rotor should be loaded and unloaded in a biosafety cabinet. For BSL-2 labs specifically, you will need to receive bloodborne pathogens training. It's strongly recommended that anyone participating in BSL-2 level work receives a hepatitis B vaccination or titer prior to starting work in the laboratory. As discussed previously for BSL-1 labs, it's important to understand how to dispose of biohazardous waste properly. In BSL-2 labs, for some biohazardous waste, an autoclave or other method for decontamination must be used for proper disposal. Liquid BSL-2 waste can be decontaminated in a final concentration of 10% bleach for 30 minutes before pouring down the drain. Solid BSL-2 waste can be collected and designated in biohazardous waste containers that can be autoclaved. Although this all sounds very simple and straightforward, following the appropriate BSL-1 and BSL-2 protocols is so important and it's the best way to ensure that you are doing your best to protect yourself while you're doing your work. Thanks for watching another video of Add Jeans Intro to the Lab Bench. Make sure that you leave a comment down below, tell us how you liked the video, or you can let us know some of the other things that you would like to see us bring to you. Adging, a better way to share science.